in the last session, we just got uh, introduced to what is AWS, right? So just help me recall. So did we see on how do we create an account last class, right? So we stopped until here. Okay, so with that fundamentals, now let's get started. So when you're going to create a machine in the cloud, that is instead of having a machine on our premises, if you are going to create a machine on the cloud, then we call that machine which you are going to create in the AWS is what we call it as a EC2. Okay, a EC2 is nothing but a machine which we are going to create on the cloud that is in the AWS. And now EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. The name Elastic Compute Cloud means you can actually scale it. So if you want, you can add more resource and if you don't want, you can remove it. So that's why we call it as Elastic Compute Cloud. Okay, so any machine that you're going to create on the AWS over the internet or the cloud is what we call it as a EC2 machine. Okay, so that way, as I said, Elastic Compute Cloud means it is going to give us a scalable computing capacity where if we want, we can add more resource to it. Then if you don't want and we are not using it, then we can pretty much remove it from it. So that's how you can scale the same particular machine. And whenever now you say that you want a machine to be available on AWS, you are actually going to create a EC2 instance or a EC2, which is going to be acting as your machine where this EC2 will be actually a virtual machine or a virtual server which will be available on the AWS and that is what we will be accessing. And using this EC2, we can specify or configure a particular security in it, set up a network for it. And also if you want to add any storage specific to it, you can do all those things specific to each of the EC2 instance or a machine that you're going to create. And whatever that we want to do, we will be doing only in this machine that we call it as a EC2. So basically EC2 is nothing but a machine that we are going to create in the AWS and access rather than creating a machine on our premises. Okay, so that's what we call it as a EC2. When you try to take a EC2, now it is going to be the same thing like how we had a physical machine in our lab or in our premises, but the difference is Rather than having a physical machine at our place, we are trying to access a machine which is called as EC2 in the AWS cloud. So if you try to compare between a regular basic computer that what we are going to have versus what is the EC2 machine, then in our regular machine, we'll be having an operating system, a CPU, a hard drive, and a network card using which you'll be specifying the network details and then for the security purpose, you will be having a firewall and the RAM, which gives us the memory. The same thing, if you go to the EC2 instance, then corresponding to this, you will be having a different names. So in a EC2 instance or a machine, you will be having something called as AMI. Okay, so this is the one which will be replacing our regular operating system. Uh -huh. Hey, in our regular operating system or in a regular machine, we call it as an operating system. But if you go to the AWS and create a machine, which is EC2, there you will not be having an operating system, but you will be using something called as a AMI, which will be giving us the operating system to use in the EC2. Same way, if you want to have a CPU, then we will be using something called as an instant type, which will be providing what is the CPU you want, how many CPUs you want, the cores, everything will be defined in this. So that is how, just like if you want to procure a new machine, you will be seeing the operating system in it and what CPU you want to have. The same way, if you go and create an EC2 machine in AWS, you are going to tell this AMI, which will be giving you the operating system and what is the type of the instance you are going to create, based on which there will be a specific CPU and other memory details inside it. Okay, and then 
when you're working on a particular machine, you need to store some data. So generally, we call that as a hard drive, correct? Whereas the same thing in the EC2 on AWS will be called as EBS, okay? So remember, we don't call it as a hard drive because this is not a physical machine. This is a virtual machine which is available in AWS. So whatever that we are going to have as a local storage to store everything in this machine is what we call it as a EBS. So this is the equivalent of the hard drive on your EC2. Then for setting up your network, we will be doing something called as IP addressing where you will be specifying a particular address to identify this machine so that we can connect to it within a group of network. Okay, and then security group. Now, when you have a machine, in that machine, you will be setting up a firewall. Firewall is nothing but a security through which you will be defining what data that should come inside your machine and what data should be going out of your machine. For example, if you're working on an organization, then or in an, uh, if you're working in a college institute, you will not be allowed to work on certain sites. That is because they will be setting as a firewall, where firewall is nothing but certain rules that you're going to put on your network based on which only a specific data can come inside the network or go outside. The same way, if you are trying to set up the similar rule on the EC2 machine, then you call it as a security group. Okay, so that is just a replacement of your firewall. And finally, you will be having your RAM, which will be giving you the memory required for this EC2 instance. So pretty much going forward now, when you are referring to a machine, it is nothing but an EC2 instance and in which you'll be having all this data. So let's try to first understand what is each one of them in deep so that we'll get a better idea on how is that you are going to create a EC2 machine. So try to compare if AMI means it is going to be a replacement of operating system. Instead type will give you the details of CPU. Instead of having a hard drive on this virtual machine that is EC2, you're going to have something called as EBS. And then the IP addressing using which you will be identifying the machine. And if you want to specify any rule for the firewall, then you will be specifying it using security group. Okay, so this is how your EC2 machine will contain. Now, So when you say that you want to create a EC2 machine on AWS, then you need to basically purchase because as I said, what exactly is AWS? You are going to get the resources on your need basis and you're going to pay only for that. So that way now, whatever the EC2 machines that you want to use, you have to basically purchase. And when you're purchasing, then there are different options that we have for purchasing. The first purchasing option that we have is on demand. So what do you mean by on demand? So whenever you want, only then you will be purchasing it. So let's say now I'm doing some task. Suddenly I need a machine. Then I'll go ahead and get a EC2 machine from the AWS based on my demand. So that kind of option is called as on demand. Whereas now on demand option is one of the most expensive way of using a machine in AWS because you are going to get a machine whenever you need, isn't it? Because the purpose here is if you're going to cloud, the advantage is here is rather than waiting on the time, if you immediately want, you should be able to get. So that is when you will be going with the on demand. And that is the reason that will be one of the most expensive option for purchasing. Because let's say that you are trying to run an e-commerce site like Flipkart. Okay, now suddenly if they are putting up a sale wherein instead of 10,000 users, they are facing suddenly 20,000 users. Now to support this another 10,000 users, they have to create, let's say another 100 machines to support. So at that instance, they should be able to create 100 machines and support the load. So those kind of scenarios is what you will be using on demand basis. So whenever you need, you're going to get a EC2 machine. And that's the reason it is the most expensive option for purchasing a EC2 machine. Whereas it is kind of flexible 
that is because there is no certain rule that you have to say this is the time duration during which you have to use so if you are requiring a machine create it on demand basis and as soon as your work is done you're just going to leave it so that way you're not going to be giving any hard-coded you know rule saying that you have to use this many time okay you're creating it on demand once your work is completed give it back so that's how you are going to be charged per hour on accessing the machine and again when i say per hour it is only when the machine is running or the ec2 instance is running it is not like if you have created a machine on demand you are going to pay from that time no only if that machine or the ec2 instance is running then we are going to pay for it okay so remember if not you are going to not pay that only if it is running you are going to pay and at any point of time if you do not want to use the machine you can basically stop or terminate the ec2 instance so that you don't have to pay for that anymore so that's one of the option where you are going to get a particular ec2 machine from the aws on demand now let's say you are working on a project and you know that this project is going to take pretty much uh, a six months or a years of time so that is when if you go into the product based organization where they are trying to do some testing activity or creating a product they want to they want to have a defined machine for a longer period so that's when you can go with the second option of purchasing which is called as reserved okay so when you say reserved you are actually reserving that particular machine for a set of time so you reserve like for six months or one year or two years or three years you are going to reserve so that way the price whatever that you are going to get for that is going to be little lesser for example if you are running a machine by creating it on on demand basis and if you have created it and running it for one year the same price if you try to apply for a result it is going to be little cheaper but the problem here with the reserved is once you reserve a machine for a set of time period then whether you are using the machine or not using the machine we will be charged which means whether the machine is running or not running we will still be charged because we are going to reserve the machine it is just like buying a machine for certain amount of time so that's how in the reserved you are going to reserve a machine for a certain time and you are going to use it and pretty much until that reserve time whether we are using it or not we are going to pay for that so depending on our need we have to choose whether i need a machine for a longer time go for reserved if not if you just want it for a shorter time period then go for on demand basis okay then other than this there is also one more option called as spot what do you mean by spot option now yesterday if you remember we were talking that amazon will have data centers called as availability zone and couple of availability zones together is what we call it as a region now in some cases if there is a availability zone on which there is some machine which is not at all being used then amazon is keeping it or aws is keeping it idle right so what they will do is instead of keeping it idle where a machine is not being used they will try to sell it for a lesser price so that way now we can try to do a bidding on that and get the machine so that is how when they are trying to give a machine which is unused they will set a spot price okay saying that this is the price that whoever wants who can take so what we can do is we can try to do a bidding on it so that whatever the spot price that we have set which is either equal to what the aws is specified or little lesser then we will be going ahead and using that machine so that's how you can try to set a bid and based on that any machine that you are getting it to that price or a little lesser price you will be able to use that machine now once again the machines that you are going to use by spot method will be charged per hour just like the on demand and then the spot price whatever will be fixed by the aws is going to be varying because it is depending on how much of supply is there and what is the demand because now let's say 
when they have a data center or availability zone in which two machines are not being used so now they will try to set a bit price price but let's say for that two machine if there are 20 people who wants to use it then automatically the bid price will go up so that is how depending on the region and the demand the bid price will be varying so in case if you want to get a machine at a cheaper price then you can do this so that if whenever a machine is not being used in availability zone that will be coming to the bit area where you can try to choose that option okay this is another option for choosing a machine on how long you want to work and one of the most preferable and the most common way of working is on demand okay now once you decide on the purchasing then we need to know how will we be charged when we are using a ec2 machine that is important so that way now there are serious factors based on which it will be charged so it is not just that you are going to create a machine on demand basis they will be charging you but depending on certain other criteria also the charges will be varying so the first thing is it depends on what kind of purchasing option that you have used that is whether it is on demand or it is going to be a reserved way or a spot machine that you have bid and you have getting it okay so that is one way of specifying then the next one is the instant type so if you remember when i was explaining what are the components that you have in a ec2 one of that you will be having is a instant type so instant type is nothing but it specifies when you want to create a ec2 machine what and all are the specifications that you want to have so based on that you will be choosing an instant type now let's say if you want to use a ec2 which has more memory in it then you will have to choose a particular option which has more memory in it on a instant type if you want more storage to put some data then you will be using a specific storage optimized instant type where you can choose what kind of storage you want and then if you want more cpu details in it then you can use a different instant type which will give you the required cpus in it so like that specific to our requirement we will be using a instant type and again charges will vary based on that then you are going to use one more type called as ebs so ebs is going to be a replacement for our hard drive so now if you want to have a better optimized ebs wherein whatever the input and output operations that you are going to do on that should be better then again we have different types of ebs where we have to choose and the charges will be varying based on that okay and then the first thing that i said when i am going to have a machine is a ami where ami will give you what is the type of operating set that you want to put it inside that machine so that way using the ami type you are going to get a particular operating system as well as if you want you can also get certain licensed software installed in it and you can get it so based on the different type of the ami you are going to choose the prices will also vary and also finally it depends on what are the data that you are trying to transfer in and out of that particular ec2 machine will also vary so if you are trying to do too much of data transfer then there will be charges for that also so that's how specifically now based on all these options we will be creating a machine and we will be charged on that either per hour basis or on a specific reserved period okay getting it okay all right now so we just saw what is the purchasing option and how we will be charged now let's look at each of the options that you have in the ec2 so the first thing is what we have is called as ami ami represents amazon's image so if you can recall on the docker 
to create a machine or a container we used a specific docker image which had certain operating systems image right so that way now if you are going to create a ec2 machine then you have to use a ami in which there will be a specific operating system in it and along with it you can also have certain software packages pre-installed so that is how depending on what type of image you use you will be getting a particular operating system as well as certain softwares which is pre-installed in it okay so remember you are going to create a machine based on a image only and that is what we call it as ami so there are different types of images based on what software you are going to use or for what operating system you want you can get it okay and when you are creating ac2 you are going to specify what is the ami based on which it is going to create so that the ami will give all the details on what is the operating system that you should have in the machine and what are the pre-installed softwares that you have so that you can choose a particular ami which is very close to your requirement and from that you can start creating ac2 instance and work on it and once again just like how we had a container image from one container sorry from one image we can create many containers in docker right in the same way by having one amazon image you can create many ec2 instances from that so that's how the first thing that you will have to do is choose the type of the image which will have the operating system and a specific software in it once you choose this what is that the next thing that you do so now when you try to create a machine first go to the service in the aws and in that try to launch a ec2 instance and when you're trying to launch a ec2 instance the amis that you're going to select will be basically into two to three categories where the first thing is community amis community amis means these are free to use amis so just like how you had the docker images which is available this is also a community image which is given by aws where it is free to use and it will basically contain only the operating system and nothing else same like how you try to download a docker image for ubuntu that we did or centos where if you go inside you will not find any packages like not even the vim so the same way if you are using this community images then you are going to get an image for free to use wherein in that the only thing that will be available is the operating system so we have to install everything that we need on top of that if not there is one more type of ami called as aws marketplace so marketplace means these are the images which the amazon is going to give wherein we have to pay for using it okay and now in this you are not just going to have only the image but in addition to the operating system you are also going to have certain licensed software pre-installed so rather than now you creating a new machine and installing a licensed product by purchasing directly you can use a ami which has the particular package or the software pre-installed so that you don't have to pay for the license instead you are going to pay only for usage basis not just purchasing the license okay so that's how if you have such a kind of requirement we will be using the aws market ami and other than this if needed we can also create our own amis the same way in the docker how is that we created a container and from that container you will create a new image right same way here on an existing ec2 you can try to create a new image and that we can again use it for creating a new ec2 instance so same way if needed the other type is you can specify whether it is a standard given by the aws that or which is free to use or from the marketplace if not we can create our own ami and use it getting it so how to do this now to do this if you go to the 
AWS console and log in. Here, you will give the email or the password that you have registered with and then give the password and sign in. So now we are interested in launching a EC2 or creating a new EC2 missions on cloud. So either if you want to search for something, you can search it here or click on the services and you'll be getting all the options. Okay, now in this, you're going to choose the EC2 either from here or you can choose from here. So if you click on EC2, it is going to take you to the home page of that particular service to create a EC2 instance. Now in this, you will have an option to launch an instance. So if you click on the launch instance, it is going to show you the list of all the AMIs or the Amazon images which is available so that based on what kind of operating system that you want and in addition, what are the packages that is pre-installed, you can try to use it. Okay, so wherever you see free tire eligible, which means you are going to use this image without paying anything. The same way now under the community AMI, these are the generic images which is available for us to create a AWS machine. And if it is specific to the marketplace, you can see now there are different images available where each one of them corresponds to a particular application which is running in it. So that rather than we purchasing a separate license, all I can do is create the machine or an EC2 from this image, then you will be getting by default the application running in it. So now let's take an example where if you are using some storage, okay, and then while you are using a storage, you might need some software called as ONTAP, which is given by the NetApp. So this is a storage based product. Now, if you want to install, rather than you know creating a separate machine and doing it, if you try to create a machine from this image, in that you are going to get this ONTAP software, whatever is being given by the NetApp, pre-installed in it okay same way if you are trying to set up a network then juniper is one of the company which gives the networking products and that way if you want to have a product installed in your machine if you try to create a machine or a ec2 from this image in that the new ec2 whatever that you're going to get will be containing the product specifically inside it wherein we are not going to pay as a license, but we are going to pay per hover or how is that you are using. So that way you can make use of the AWS marketplace to choose a particular type of image in which you have a specific file which you want to work on. Okay, so that's how you either choose a free tire from I mean free tire image from the community or you can choose particularly from the marketplace wherein you will be charged for that okay so say launch instance and all you have to do is choose a particular type so here i'm going to use the amazon linux in which you can see what and all operating system it has and additionally what tools that it will be having pre-installed okay so i can just go ahead and select one Once you select one, the next thing that you're going to get is the instant type, okay? So what do you mean by your instant type? So an instant type is nothing but the CPU of that particular machine. So if you're creating an instance, that is an EC2 instance, then it needs certain CPU for that, right? So whatever the information that you're going to give is what we call it as instant type, okay? So instant type is the one which will be specifying the details on the CPU for that EC2 machine. So basically when you try to launch an instant, then the instant type determines what is the hardware that you have to put on the particular EC2 machine. Okay, so that's how it will be useful. And then 
each instance that we are going to create, it gives us a specific what operating system? No, that is not going to give. That is AMI. So instant type means it is going to give only specific details about the storage and the memory. Nothing yet. That is related to the CPU. Okay. So that now, if you select an instant type based on our requirement, then again on the plan, whatever that you have choosed, whether it is on demand or it is going to be a reserved, we will be charged accordingly. So instead type means basically it will give you all the information regarding the CPU that you need for that particular EC2 instance. Okay, so if you look at this, there will be a lot of options available in based on your requirement. You're going to choose one. Okay, now let's say I want to have a EC2 which is going to have two CPUs, then you have to choose it accordingly and in that if you want a memory of certain GB bytes, then you are going to choose based on this. Or let's say if you're going to work, then EBS is nothing but it is going to replace your hard drive. So that way, whatever that you're going to store on the EC2 machine will be available as a EBS. So do you want to use this? And do you want to do any optimization on this? And how should be the network performance? Depending on that, you will be choosing the type or the instant type. So now based on that you will be again charged together and pretty much all the major ones are chargeable. So one of the free type of the instance that you're going to create is T2 micro. So this will give us a free tire which we can use but pretty much other things we will be charged. Okay so now when you're trying to choose the instant type choose T2 micro when you're practicing so that it is free tire whereas all the other ones will be charged. So once you have done then you can click on the next where the next option before that is EBS. Okay so now once you have choose the type of instance the next one what you're going to do is you have to give the EBS details to that particular machine. That is the EC2 instance. So now what exactly is EBS? So EBS stands for elastic block store or the storage. So it is going to replace your hard drive in a physical machine. So if it is in a physical machine, you need to store something, you need a hard drive. Whereas the same thing if you are trying to store onto the cloud that is on an EC2 machine, then we will be having this EBS as a storage and only in that on that EC2 machine whatever you are storing it will be coming to this EBS only. Okay and the volumes that we are going to use for the EBS are quite highly available and they are also reliable storage volumes which we can attach to any running instance that is on the same zone which means now let's say you are having a machine and suddenly you want to add a storage to it then you can think about adding the EBS to it without causing any problem. So that is how while a machine is running you can attach a particular EBS volume to it so that you will be getting more storage whenever it is needed. Okay and whenever you are trying to add a new EBS storage to a particular machine then what will happen is whenever the machine is going to be terminated doesn't mean that the storage in terms of the EBS which is available in it is going to be terminate. So that is separate which means now you can take the same storage that is EBS and put onto some other machine. So that's how it is independent of the machine. So if you want you add it as a volume if you don't want you can remove. And the same thing we can take it from one machine and put into other machine while it is running. So that's how you are going to save a lot of effort and the money in taking up the physical space whatever that you need instead of a hard drive in the EC2 you are going to use the EBS machine. Okay and then 
there's something called as IOPS. So what is IOPS? So practically, when you're trying to use a EBS, which is nothing but a replacement for your hard drive, now it is going to take some input and output, right? So that is what we call it as IOPS. So IOPS stands for input and output operations per second, which are happening on that particular EBS attached to a machine. Okay, so generally, when you are trying to do some calculation and you are going to measure the input output data, then it will be measured in forms of KIB. It is not kilobyte, KIB means kibibyte. In fact, the same way if you are using GB, then it is called as GB byte. So it is not kilobyte, it's kibibyte, where one kibibyte is equivalent to. 1024 bytes okay and now if you want to have more storage or if you want to have a better performance on the EBS volume so that you can read something or put into it then think about having larger EBS volumes so if you have a huge EBS volume then corresponding to it we will be having a better rate of input and output operations on it. So that's how we will be having larger the EBS volume size, then the more will be the IOPS that the volume can have. Okay, so that way, if you have more IOPS, then it means that the performance of that EBS will be better in terms of reading from it or writing from it. Okay, so this is how you are going to choose on what is the EBS along with the instant type okay and that you can come and look at this location the next thing is storage okay I'll show you in that once we complete it so as I was saying when you say you are creating a machine now every machine should have a hard drive and instead of that you are going to attach something called as a EBS volume, which is available for the storage in AWS. Now, when you create a EC2 machine, now there will be a volume called as root volume, where this is the actual volume, which is going to be acting as the hard drive for that machine. Okay, now every EC2 machine that you're going to create will contain one root volume, that is the one on which you are going to actually store. But when you are having a root volume, it can be or it cannot be a EBS volume. But by default, when you create, you will be creating a EC2 instance in that whatever that you want to store will be on a EBS volume. So that way, now, if you are having a EC2 machine in which the root volume is a EBS, then if you delete the machine, then this will also be deleted. That is because the root volume is directly attached to the machine. So as long as the machine is there, it is going to be available. If the machine is not there, then that particular root volume will not be available. Okay, so that's how depending on your need, you have to decide whether you are going to have the root volume as the EBS. But if it is there, Whenever the machine is going to be deleted, the root volume will also get deleted. And the advantage what you will be having using EWS, sorry, uh, EBS is whenever you are trying to do some task and suddenly if you want to add more space to it, then you can attach another EBS to it so that you will be getting more space, whatever that you want to work to store in that. So that is how at some point of time when the instance is running if you want more space or the volume then you can add an additional EBS volume to it so that it will be giving us more space and whenever you delete a machine these kind of additional volumes that you are adding will not be deleted because along with the machine whatever is the root volume only that will be deleted whereas all these volumes that you are going to add is independent of the instance. So that's how if you delete the machine, only the root volume or the root EBS will be deleted. Anything additionally that you are adding will not be deleted. Okay. And not only that, 
Now, when you are actually working, you can take the EBS volume from one machine and you can attach it to the other machine. Now, let's say you're working on an EC2 machine and you have created an EBS and you have stored something. But now, going forward, you don't need it in this machine and it is needed on some other machine. Then simply, you can try to detach the particular additional volume that you have added to that machine and take that and add it to the another machine on which you need that to be available so that all the data that you had on the EBS volume will be available on the new machine. So these kind of swapping can be done while the instance is running. So you don't have to stop and work on that. Okay, so this is how for every instance you are going to create a root volume and on top of that if you need more space you will be going ahead with additional volumes. Getting it? Now, when you're having a hard drive, let's say on your laptop or a physical machine, now, any point of time, if you want a backup, you'll be taking a backup, right? So that is possible. But now, when you're using a EC2 machine on AWS, and instead of the hard drive, you are going to use a EBS, then how is that you can take a backup? So that is when, in the EBS, you also have one more thing called as snapshot. So what is a snapshot? Now basically snapshot is nothing but a reference of the content of a at that point of time, like whatever that you're taking. In the same way, now you can take a snapshot from an EBS volume, wherein it will be just an image of what is exactly available in the EBS volume at that point of time. And you can store this snapshots as a backup so that regularly you can take a snapshot from the particular EBS volume and you can store it in the AWS. And whenever we want to take a backup from this particular snapshot, what we can do is we can try to create a new EBS volume from this. Okay, so it is not like from a snapshot you are going to extract the data from that snapshot you will be creating a new volume which will be having all the content what you had in the snapshot. So that is how you're going to get the data from the backup available in the snapshot. Okay, so now same point of time, you can attach or detach a snapshot to a particular machine. Okay, and like I said, if you want to restore some content from a snapshot, the only possibility is you are going to create a new EBS volume from that snapshot. So you will be having a machine to which you will be attaching a EBS volume and this is where whatever that you are storing on that machine or EC2 will be stored in this. And now on a regular basis, you will be taking a snapshot and whenever you want to restore it from the snapshot, then you will have to duplicate and create a new volume from it. So that is how you are going to get the data from it. Getting it? Okay. So what and all we saw? So we saw an overview of the instant type and then the AMI, right? And after the AMI, then we are looking at the storage that is the EBS and after that, now we had something called as firewall and equivalent to that is security groups, right? So what exactly is this? So when you say a firewall or a security group is nothing but a replacement of a firewall which we'll have in a physical machine. If it is a AWS machine or a EC2 machine, we call it as a security group. Now that way, what exactly is a firewall? So a firewall is nothing but a network security system which is designed 
particularly to prevent any unauthorized access which is happening within a network or outside a network so that's how using the firewall what you are going to do is you are going to specify who should be able to access so you are going to provide a authorization in such a way that only whatever is needed will be able to access within the network or outside the network so no one else outside can access the machines inside or access the data okay so that's what we call it as a firewall now since the ec2 machine whatever that we are going to create is actually a virtual machine then we refer to that as a security group wherein the security group is going to act as a virtual firewall for our machine and it will take care of all the traffic that is coming to the machine or going out to the machine or the ec2 instance okay so how is that you are going to set up the security so you are going to basically apply something called as rules where for each security group you are going to apply a rule and tell what is allowed and what is denied in terms of the traffic so when i say traffic it is nothing but the data that is going to come within the network or going out so that way now which is allowed and which is denied we will be specifying it using a rule just like how you are going to specify in the firewall you are going to specify a group which will say what is allowed to come inside the network and what is allowed to go outside the network or what is not okay now finally when you are trying to set up a security group the best practice what we will follow is by default we will be denying all the traffic so that if someone creates a security group nothing can be accessed by default and then based on the need whatever that you want to access then you will be allowing only that traffic whatever is needed so that way by default everything will not be allowed to access and then on top of that you will specify what is the kind of traffic that you want to allow inside or outside that particular ec2 machine which is available in the network so that's how using the security group we will be specifying certain rules okay and coming up to the next final thing so for each ec2 machine that you are going to create now you need to specify a ip address why do you need a ip address now let's consider that if we have to send an email or a postcard to something or if you are doing uh, online purchasing and something has to be delivered how is that it is going to be delivered to our house or office so you need to give a address right like which area and then in that area which street which building or which door number so based on that exactly we will be getting something delivered in the same way now when you are trying to work on the ec2 on aws there will be lot of ec2 machines so when you want to connect from one machine to the other machine you need to tell what is the address related to it so that way that address is what we call it as an ip address so using the ip address we will be able to point out a particular machine or a ec2 instance on the network okay so that way uh, ip can be of two types that is private ip and public ip basically now when you are creating a ec2 machine you are going to get a private ip associated to it every time you create a ec2 machine you will be getting a private ip and this private ip or the private address ip address will allow whatever the instance that we are created to communicate as long as it is available in the same network because when you are creating you also have to create something called as a network or a private network so in aws that private network is what we call it as vpc okay so we'll just see an overview of that little later but for now if you are creating a machine it will be associated to a specific ip address and also to a private network so that is how within that private network called vpc any machine if it wants to reach to another machine it will be using the ip address okay 
end. The other type of IP address is public IP. So now whenever we can create a machine, it is not mandatory that you should be giving a public IP. You will always be giving a private IP. But when is a public IP needed? Only when if the machine, whatever that we have created, it has to communicate outside the network. OK, then you need to have a specific public IP. Only then it will be able to communicate outside the network. OK, if not, if you want to communicate within a network, then pretty much the public, sorry, private IP should be sufficient. But if you are trying to access the EC2 instance outside the network, what you have created in the AWS, then it should have a public IP. OK. OK, so now with that basic information, now let's try to create a machine. So how is that you're going to create a machine? You have to specify what is the image type and from that you are going to specify what is the instant type that you need and then what is the storage and it'll be going with setting up a security group and then we will launch it. OK, so let's try to see that quickly. So once again, if you want to create a machine, then go to the services. Either you can click this or click here, wherein if you click on EC2, it is going to give you an option in which click on the launch instance. First thing, you have to choose the type of the AMI based on which we will be getting a particular operating system and certain packages or softwares pre-installed in it. So now this, if you choose, the next thing is what is the instant type based on which we will be getting the CPU details. So in our free tire, make sure you are using T2 micro. And once you go ahead, the next thing what it is going to ask is what is the private network or the security group that you are going to use. Now we can leave it by default for initial practice. OK, so that is all advanced level when you are trying to create a complete network. But for us, we are not interested in it. So let's go ahead with the default. Network that is available, which is going to be giving us and how many instances that you are going to create. So here, if you see, in case if you are going to use this machine for a spot that is spot reference, then you are going to give. If not, whatever the machine that we are going to create will be a on-demand machine only. Okay. So once you give the basic details, then go ahead to the add storage where this is the location which will be telling us what is the hard drive that you are going to use. Where we are not going to use a hard drive. Instead, we are going to use a EBS which will be attached to it. And that is what we call it as the root volume. Root volume means for a machine, you should be having a volume which will be acting as the mandatory hard drive. And here you are going to choose what is the type that you are going to have. Pretty much you want to have a more provisioned IOP that is input output operations, then you are going to choose it. And if you want to add more volumes to it, then you can add more volumes into it because by default, when you create a root volume, it can have until 30 GB. And here you are specifying what is the default space that you should have in this mounted on this machine's path. So after creating a EC2 machine, if you go under this path, this is where everything will be stored. So if you want to add more, data then you can go ahead using add new volumes and add more space to it again based on how much more you add then that will be charged and finally if you go ahead with the next option that is tag now just like how we saw tag in a particular uh, you know version controlling now you can give a name to a machine because uh, EC2 machine which is going to be getting created, it will be having a unique name which the AWS itself will give. Suppose if you want to have any other name specific to it, then you can give it based on your name so that you can add a tag to that machine so that if you want to refer, you can refer to this name. If not, you can always refer to the name what the AWS is going to give. 
and finally coming to the security group so if you want to set up a particular role where using the rule what it has to do and what it has not to do that is what data should be coming inside the machine or what it should be going outside you will be setting up over here suppose if you want to allow a particular kind of ssh to this machine then you give this and what port can allow suppose if you want you know certain https access to be done so depending on what action that you want to do or what flow of the traffic that you want to go inside it or come outside you will be adding rules specifically and in that way if you want you can create a new group and you can specify all the data and with respect to that you will be adding the rule to that and that is the security group that you will be creating for your machine so based on the rule what you are going to give only that traffic will be allowed inside or outside your machine if not in aws you will always have a default security group which you can use so depending on your need now you can choose it if you see the default security group this has certain rule where it says in this you will be allowed to connect through http under the port 80 the same thing if you want to work on tcp rule then you can use it using the port 8080 so like this what is the traffic which is going to go inside the machine or come outside the machine you can add so for us again we are not going to get into very deep of that so pretty much use the default type and then go ahead and review so when you say review it is going to give you all the details about this is the image type that we have created where we are going to get a operating system inside our ec2 which will be called as amazon linux ami in that we are also going to get certain softwares pre-installed like python ruby pearl and java and you'll also have this and in that we are going to use a ebs storage as the hard drive replacement and in that you are going to use one cpu with one gigabyte of the memory of the ram and that type what you are going to use is t2 micro okay and what is the default security group that you are going to apply to that and based on that what under the rule or that you are going to apply on it will be defined and finally if you want to know the details about the instance so as of now since we didn't specify anything it is going to be a on demand purchasing that we are trying to do okay so it's going to give all the details suppose if you have added additional storage it is going to give what exactly it is so in our case we have used the default ebs storage under the root and that is going to have this much of space and you'll be accessing it through this so you just make sure that whatever the requirements you have is the same one and finally go ahead and click on the launch okay now when you are trying to do a launch it is going to ask you something called as a key and a value pair okay so what exactly is this key pair now if you want to connect to a machine generally you will be giving a username and password right so instead of using that we are actually trying to connect a machine which is available in the aws so in the aws if you want to connect to a machine then we will be using something as a combination of public and private key associated to your account so that is how using that account if you try to log into the machine it will not ask you the username and the password directly will be able to access so that way you need to create a separate public and private key together so if you do not have it already first go ahead and say create new pair and in this if you just give a name and say download what it will do is it will generate a file called as dot pem which will be unique with the name what you have given and later on whenever we are going to connect to the machine that this ec2 machine which we are going to create we will be using this key pair only okay so make sure you give some name here and download and keep it only using that you will be able to connect and then 
thereafter for all the other machines what you are going to create you can specify the same key so now i have already created a key called as test key and corresponding to it there is a pm file which i have downloaded so that is what i am going to use to connect so once you create the key acknowledge and launch the instance okay so immediately it is going to launch the instance and if you want to see you can have a look where now if you go to the services under ec2 once again in this location you are going to say that here there is a particular machine which is still under the process it's not yet created but as soon as it gets created you will see that there is a instance that will be running and based on that what and all other details so we have one key pair which we have generated and in that there is one volume available so everything will be specified here and to see the list of instances that you have you can come here so now you can see there is one ec2 machine which has been generated which we just now launched and this is the name of that and the corresponding ip address is specified here okay so how is that you are going to connect to this machine now the only difference is instead of having a machine in our premises somewhere we are having this in the cloud so if you want to know click on this action sorry click on the connect and it will give you how is that you want to connect so all you have to do now is the downloaded pm file wherever you had from that location if you just say ssh and iphone i and give the pm name it is going to connect to the machine because if you remember i already had a key and i generated this machine attached to it so that is how if i just say ssh iphon i and the <clears throat> key pair then it is going to connect to this machine with the username called as ec2 automatically okay so now i have already downloaded that particular pm file or the key over here so this is the actual key which is available under this location so now if i go to that okay so this is the directory where i have this key okay you can see that i have this particular key so from this location if i just say the command ssh i using this key connect to the machine as this user and this is the machine that we have created without asking the username or the password it will be connected because we have the key so now you can see we have connected to this amazon linux ami based on this image is what we have created the machine so we have connected to this machine which is running here okay so this if you try to look it is a fedora machine which the amazon is given because since we used this particular image type it is going to create based on whatever has been put under it okay so this is how you are going to create a machine and whenever you want you connect it using the key what you have generated specifically to that and whenever you do as such you are going to connect so that's how you will create as many machines that you want here and access it using this key okay now whenever you don't want it more and you want to stop then simply come here and right click on it and go ahead on the state and stop or terminate the same can be done over the actions here also actions the instant state either you want to stop or terminate suppose i do not want a machine anymore i'll simply go ahead and terminate it after a couple of seconds it will be terminated fully getting it on how is that you are going to create a instance on need basis so whenever you have a demand immediately you are going to create a machine